Hello, everybody, and uh, Happy New Year. Welcome to the Build Your AutoCAD IQ webinar series. And uh, we're going to have a great presentation for you today. Tips and Tricks, New Features in AutoCAD for Mac 2017. So a little bit about us here. First of all, I'll let Jim introduce himself. He is our presenter today, Jim LaPierre. And moderating will be Naman Mysarwala. And to the left, lower left, that would be me, Wilker Coco. And um, we'll be answering your questions in the chat window as well as uh, during the presentation as well as um, some uh, additional Q&A after the webinar. So before we get started, um, be sure to leave any questions in the chat window. There are going to be several of us answering those questions. And I should note that as a um, behind the scenes uh, moderator, Dave Pothier will be assisting us as well. And uh, this was last minute, so I did not put his name on the slide. I apologize, Dave. Forgive me. All right, we're going to answer as many questions as time allowed, uh, allows. And uh, as always, we're, we will be recording this session, so it will be available on our YouTube channel. And you will be emailed links for the um, uh, data set, the presentation itself, uh, as well as a notification of when that recording is available to view. Uh, those uh, links uh, are sent also in your registration reminder. Uh, in the survey, and we can always paste them in the chat window as well. So, um, plenty of time to review this afterwards. So, a little bit about our series for those of you who are new to the Build Your AutoCAD IQ webinars. Uh, these are hosted by Autodesk Technical Support as well as your Autodesk Expert Elite. Both uh, Jim and Naman are Expert Elite. Uh, uh, very um, um, just great assets, both of them, uh, any of the expert elites actually, they're the ones who are answering a lot of those questions in the Autodesk forum. So uh, very talented and knowledgeable uh, people. Uh, so we are going to have a new schedule posted, and this will be posted in February for the 2017 webinar series. We've had a lot of questions as to what's going on with the webinars, when's the schedule going to be available, so um, there you go. In February, it'll be posted. You can watch our past webinars on the YouTube channel. Those links are, um, again, sent to you or uh, in this slide deck if you download that later on. And uh, we would encourage you to, if you know anybody who would like to uh, join these webinar series, if you want to watch one, watch all of them, uh, have them register on our Autodesk Help webinar page. All right, uh, being part of technical support here at Autodesk, uh, we do want to point out that we have the Autodesk Knowledge Network available for you to find numerous resources uh, about new products, uh, all our products actually, uh, AutoCAD LT, AutoCAD and all other products that we here at Autodesk provide. Uh, you can also find uh, support options, resources for learning, downloads for updates, uh, as well as direct links to the Autodesk community. So. If you haven't checked out the Knowledge Network, great place to start for any resource you need. So our topic again this week will be AutoCAD for Mac 2017. So we're going to get a quick review of the application, some of the new features in, uh, uh, on the uh, interface for AutoCAD for Mac. Uh, some of the new tools that have been included, PDF import, uh, dynamic center lines, as well as other functionality that has changed and improved that product. Now, before I hand this over to Jim, I would like to do a couple of polls. Uh, those who have attended before, you've seen one or two of these, um, but uh, it does help us with future 
webinars to um, get this information from you. So our first poll is, is this your first Autodesk Help webinar? And we are at uh, 93, 86%, 80% for no. So quite a few of you are uh, returning attendees. And it is so good to have you back. We're happy to have you back. And uh, we hope that those of you who are new to this webinar series will um, get something out of it and join us again in future sessions. So just a quick presentation of uh, the numbers here as far as 88% of you have you been here, 12%. This is your first webinar. Okay, one more here, and then we'll hand it over to Jim. So this particular webinar, of course, is for AutoCAD for Mac. Most of our webinars are for AutoCAD LT and AutoCAD for Windows. And um, so we're interested in seeing if you use AutoCAD for the Mac, LT, or vanilla AutoCAD. Um, and if any of you are using the cross-platform licensing option, that would be good to know as well. What that is, if you aren't familiar with that is, it allows you to have um, download both um, and install both AutoCAD for Windows as well as AutoCAD for Mac. Uh, you do have that option if you're um, if you have a Mac and you want to get comfortable with that Mac uh, AutoCAD. All right, so let's go ahead and close that poll and just kind of share that with you real quick. So. 2% using AutoCAD LT for Mac and as well as uh, the AutoCAD for Mac. Most of you are using the AutoCAD based applications for Windows, which that is to be expected at this time. So, hey, thanks for that input. I'll go ahead and hide that and what I think I will do now, it's a good thing to do, is I'm going to go ahead and hand this over to Jim LaPierre. And I think you'll enjoy his presentation. All right, Jim. Thank you, Volker. Let's see. Okay. I think they're ready to go. Uh, thanks for having me back, everyone. Um, so I'll run through the uh, my first two or three slides here really, really quickly, especially if you guys have ever seen me present before. But for those of you who are new, um, my name is Jim Lapierre. I've been using AutoCAD for Windows since version 13, uh, going on about 17, 18 years now. Um, I've worked in pretty much anything that has to do with getting black lines on white paper. Um, so whether it's, you know, I've done mechanical engineering, architectural design, telecommunications, um, some civil stuff, landscape stuff, uh, CAD management. I am um, humbled to be an expert elite member. Uh, essentially means I spend way too much time on social media and forums. Um, but uh, as most of the other expert elites are incredibly knowledgeable in their in their field, so um, definitely a good resource to use, as Volker was saying. Um, I own Impact Design, so essentially I'm a... Um, hired IT gun and CAD manager for hire and clients all across the country. Um, I teach uh, AutoCAD on the Windows platform at a local college and I am an author on lynda.com. It's a great resource and I'll talk a little bit about that uh, later towards the end where you can find some of the other uh, resources. And I am a former genius at Apple Retail so I have, you know, drunk in my, uh, the Kool-Aid, I have the pajamas and uh, quite the Apple fanboy and all that stuff. But anyway, so um, again, really quick, a brief history. Autodesk left Mac back in 1994, pretty much when everybody else was leaving Mac as well. Uh, Intel processors came back to the Mac in 2005. Uh, about two, three months later, uh, Apple introduced Boot Camp. Pretty much said, hey, if you run, a one, run Windows on your Mac, come on over, we'll help you out. And they actually have a little utility that helps you install Windows on your Mac computer. Uh, but for about five, six years, the only options we really had were installing a secondary operating system or virtualization, kind of running Windows inside the Mac uh, operating system, which split your system resources and can get rather confusing and messy. So neither one were really good options. Uh, but in 2010, they announced AutoCAD for Mac, the first native Mac uh, AutoCAD version in 17 years. Uh, it was completely rewritten from the ground up so that it took advantage of uh, Coco and uh, all the other uh, programming languages that the Mac uses, so it wasn't just a quick port. Um, so 
where are we at right now? Since the initial version, the initial version, uh, I'll freely admit, was, in my opinion, a little underpowered. There were a lot of missing features because they had rewritten the program completely from scratch. So 2012, we uh, got AutoCAD for Mac LT. They added network licensing. Uh, we finally got the ability to edit our plot style tables, which was missing in the initial version. Um, 2013, we got sheet sets, PDF underlays, and so forth. Uh, 2014, we, we got our retina support. So when they introduced the uh, uh, Retina MacBook Pros. Um, they revised the entire interface for uh, AutoCAD for Mac. Everything's high res, so it still supports uh, even today all the 4K and 5K iMacs and screens and so forth that everybody's using. Uh, 2015, we got the ability to create and edit dynamic blocks, something users have been asking for for a while. We got layer states, we got quick select. Uh, 2016, we got F XREF path mapping. So if you're not familiar, um, Windows and Mac, they map to servers in different ways. Windows uses uh, drive letters, so the P drive, the X drive, whereas Mac uses volumes and we use names, so things like the project drive. So what this allows us to do is if you're working in a mixed environment office, people can be working in Mac and Windows and using external references without any issues. It kind of knows that the P drive equals the project volume on the Mac side, so really handy. We got a bunch of Express tools, text M text, bursts and stuff. Um, we got a bunch of RevCloud improvements, but meat and potatoes while we're really here today is 2017. We got a brand new revised interface. We got PDF importing feature that was introduced in Windows a couple months back. Um, and we got associated center marks and center lines and a bunch of other 2D graphic improvements and some text edit improvements and so forth. So, as with most things, it's all about the looks. So this is the new version of AutoCAD for Mac 2017. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. Now, this is the uh, last version that ran back in 1994. This is what uh, we left with in AutoCAD for Mac uh, way back in 1994. And this is what we've had for the past five or six years. Uh, interface is very Mac-like. It was, um, when it came out, uh, Mac interface was very palletized, I'll call it. Uh, everything in floating palettes, you could move around the screen, everything a little disjointed, but it was a very Mac-like interface. But I can tell you as a trainer and as a consultant, the biggest complaint that I got was, why is the interface so different? Um, it looks nothing like the, the Windows environment and people would just immediately see it and just kind of shy away. Um, and again, I teach on the, uh, the college on the Windows side and a lot of my students would bring in their MacBook Pros and try and use AutoCAD for Mac when they'd go home and they'd have the Windows side during class and then the Mac side at home and it just got incredibly confusing for them. So with 2017, we got a brand new interface and this is what it looks like. So my personal opinion, this is kind of this perfect marriage between the two interfaces. We have, um, we got our drawing tabs back, we have the toolbar across the top uh, that I'll talk about, and I'll go through each one of these in just a couple of minutes as we go through. Um, the tool sets, the tool palettes off on the uh, left side now look a lot more like the ribbon panel that everyone was used to. We got our layout tabs uh, from the Windows side, so, and the status bar has been revised. And just for comparison's sake, so the left we have AutoCAD for Mac as it's been up through 2016. On the right, we have uh, AutoCAD for Windows, and then in the middle, kind of where it should be, is the new interface. So again, you can see it's kind of taking cues from both sides. Um, it's nothing, it's still a little different than the Windows side, and you know, obviously it's different, but it's not this big leap that it used to be. So in my opinion, I think it's this really nice, clean interface uh, that people should be able to adopt a little bit more easily. So let's take a quick run around it, start at the top. This is called the toolbar. Uh, this is very reminiscent of the quick access toolbar that you have on the window side. So we have you know, open, save, uh, uh, print, undo, redo, and all those other quick select, uh, quick access bar, uh, tools that you have on the window side. Over on the left side, we have the newly revised uh, tool sets. So same vertical um, or vertical orientation, but these look a lot more like the ribbon panels that we're used to from the window side. And I've talked about this before, um, and I've been saying this for quite a few years now. I actually prefer the vertical tool uh, sets. I like the fact that they're off to the side. Um, when everybody moved away from standard, you know, four three ratio square monitors and went to widescreen monitors, it was great. But it also meant that things like the ribbon that take up a lot of that vertical space 
in my opinion, they just took up a little bit too much space, especially if you're working on a 13-inch laptop. So I like having my palettes on the left and the right side of the screen, and this is definitely, uh, in my opinion, this perfect little marriage between the two. It still looks like the panels uh, and the ribbon, but it's a, in a more vertical kind of configuration. We got drawing tabs uh, finally. So um, in the past, the only way to cycle between your drawings was you know, doing a command tab or um, alt tab and then or going through the windows, or we used to have this show way, uh, layouts and windows kind of visor that would pop up. Uh, now we can simply have four or five win uh, drawings open and just tab across them as we see fit. We also got a revised properties and layers palette. So um, we used to have this tiny little layers palette that would kind of expand and contract, and they've done away with that. Layer palette has its own separate little layer palette, um, and now we have this pa properties palette that looks a lot more like properties palette from the Windows side. We also got our layout tabs, and I was quite happy to finally get this. It used to be we had a little drop down, and we have to at least take two uh, clicks, two picks, to get to a different layout. Now one pick or one click, and you're on a different layout or back in model space or wherever it is you need to be. And we've got a newly revised status bar. So again, very similar to the Windows side, uh, easy to customize, turn icons on and off. So enough talking about it. Let's actually see this stuff in action. And here we have it. So uh, again, very uh, clean interface, very new interface. I'm going to, again, kind of start in the same order that I went through them really quickly. But we have the toolbar across the top up here. I can right click and I can view this with text or just as the icons. Uh, if I don't like it, maybe it gets in the way, maybe it offends your aesthetic sensibilities, I can go up here to Window and simply hide it or bring it back. Uh, it's also really easy to customize it. I've got my whole selection of uh, options here, my spaces and flexible spaces. Uh, let's say I want to add my inquiry tools up there. I simply drag them up there and pop them in. Uh, I, wanna, I like to add spaces in between my toolbars. I'll throw that up there. And there they are. If I want to get rid of them, just click and drag them off, and I get my little Mac puff of smoke there, and they're gone. So really handy to have. Um, I didn't realize quite how much I missed this on the Mac side uh, until I got it back and, and uh, really started using the undo and the save uh, buttons and so forth. Um, file tabs across the top. So again, now I can have a whole bunch of different drawings open. Uh, kind of jump back and forth between these with ease. I can right click on one of these guys and I have all the same options that we do on the Windows side that we're used to. Uh, we've got new, open, save, save as, uh, save all and close all. I was missing these quite a bit uh, from earlier. Um, we also have this new little guy right here called move to new session. I'm going to show you guys that in just a few minutes. Uh, but these other two down here, we've got open the file location and copy the file, uh, the full file path. So again, I talked about this the last time. I love this little command. If I've got Finder open, I open up a new drawing file. It's in a project, and I accidentally close that Finder uh, window, and I want to open up another file that's related to this project that I've got the drawing for, I've got to navigate through my Finder and navigate through the server to find it. With this, simple click, and there's the drawing in its location on my computer. So really easy to jump back and forth between that. Um, and again, these are you know, I can drag these back and forth to whatever order I want them to be in, just as you would expect. I still have the old-fashioned um, uh, visor here that shows me all the drawings and all the layouts if you like this, and it's a very pretty interface. Um, you know, I can still drag and drop things back and forth in this uh, view as well, um, but it's just an extra pick and a click, so quite happy to have these up here now. Over here along the left side, the brand new tool sets. So, uh, again, these are very, very similar to the uh, what we're used to as far as the ribbon panels. Um, the cool thing about these, and again, another thing I think we've kind of got over the window side, is I can collapse these as I like. So I've got my little arrow here. Uh, let's say I want to do some dimensioning, and I want to focus on that. I can get rid of all of these guys and just focus down here on text, dimension, and leaders, and just focus on the tools that I want to use. I've got a little gear over here as well. If I click on that, I can control what commands I actually see. Maybe I really don't want to access the textile uh, from you know just a big button. Maybe I want to uh, get rid of some of these guys and kind of clean up this toolbar and make it or this tool panel and make it exactly what I want. So really easy to kind of customize that interface however I like it. Uh, 
Uh, we also have the modeling tool set here. So again, just like we, we've always had on the Mac side, you can kind of switch back and forth between these guys. But we also got a new feature up here, and that's this little guy right here. So I like the width of these. Again, it looks very pretty. You got the nice big icons. looks very uh, like the window side. But in my opinion, if I'm working on a very small, uh, very small space here, this takes up a lot of space, a lot of screen real estate. So I can minimize that as well, get them off to the side. I can still expand and contract these as I like, but they take up just a little bit less of that uh, horizontal space for me. Now these are, uh, again, easily customizable. I've got two new little icons down here at the bottom as well. So plus, obviously Mac operating system, plus always means add. I can create my own panel. So we'll call this Jim's panel here. And then I can choose a layout. So I can choose uh, whichever kind of layout that I want. Maybe I want two big icons and a bunch of small ones. Maybe I only want small icons. Whatever kind of layout that I like. And then it's just a matter of grabbing and dragging these in. You can see I get a little live preview right here as I'm building my own little panel. I can throw all these guys in there. I get the first four big icons. They go in order. And I can start adding the little ones. I can add a drop down here real quick as well. And I can search. So let's do a quick little drop down for a cut. Let's do copy. And then let's do paste. So I'm going to bring in all of these paste uh, tools that we've got here. And you can see I got the little icon down here. If I click on it, click and hold, there's the my new little drop down. But I don't like it being that little tiny guy. So I'm going to click on the gear again so I can modify this. I'm just going to drag it up to the top. And now it becomes the first icon, the nice big icon. And there's my drop down. So incredibly easy drag and drop kind of stuff to make your own little panel. Um, I can reorder these as well. So if I click on this little guy, Maybe I want Jim's panel to be right up at the top where it should be, and it throws it right up there for me. Now, if I decide I don't like that panel, I want to you know, start from scratch, I have a little trash can icon. This icon only shows up in the panels that you've created. Um, so I can click that little delete, confirm it, and it's gone. So really cool new little tool set there. Across the bottom, we've got our layout, <coughs> excuse me, our layout tabs. Again, just like you would expect, jump back and forth, layout one, two, and three. You can drag these back and forth, just like I'm used to. Right click and I can rename, duplicate or delete these as I see fit, or jump back into model. And I can uh, have a little plus icon to add new layouts as well. Uh, moving our way across the bottom, we've got the new status bar. And again, just like the window side, I've got a little gear down here. I can click that and I can control which of these uh, icons, which of these toggles I actually see down here. Maybe I want to see the UCS icon and dynamic UCS, so I can toggle those on and off. And just like before, simply click it to turn it on and off. If I right click, I can go to, let's say, settings for the dynamic input, or let's go find the uh, object snaps right here. If I right click on that one, I can control all my running object snaps. I can also jump right to the settings and control them from here as well. And in my opinion, the most important part of the AutoCAD interface is the command line down here. Again, just how we would expect it. I can drag and drop it, make it a little bit uh, smaller, give myself more lines or less lines, and click over here and control. I can see the history. I can copy the history out if I need to. Maybe I'm writing a script. I can copy that history. Um, I can control whether autocomplete, autocorrect, all those settings that we uh, like are on or jump right to editing the command aliases if I like. Over here on the right side, again, our new properties palette. So we dropped the, uh, the old little layers palette, but in place of it, we got a brand new larger layers palette. So this is a little bit more to, uh, like we're used to on the window side. I have all my columns uh, up here across the top. Um, I create a new layer, control the uh, the line types and the line weights, uh, add whatever colors that I like, freeze it, lock it, uh, stop it from printing, whatever it is I like. I can also apply uh, different filters just like we're used to. I can jump right to the layer state manager that we're all uh, fairly familiar with. Um, I can group my layers together and I can also control which uh, groups and group my layers together. So again, none of these are really new features. They're just new ways of accessing all those features. Properties palette, again, we still have our my, uh, my properties palette, or my little custom palette here. Again, another little thing that we've got over the window side, I can select an object, 
and I can see just a truncated version of the properties. I still have access to all of them, but maybe I only want to see a handful of these, and I can customize this. Maybe I uh, want to know what the uh, delta X, delta Y, and the delta Z are, and the angle. Well, there we go. That's in my little list there. I still have access to everything, but now I just have a smaller version of it. So all the things that we're used to, still here, but it's also built into this much more kind of condensed uh, interface. Um, so it's all a single window now instead of all these floating palettes that we were used to. Uh, what this does uh, hinder us from just a little bit is having two drawings open side by side. It used to be really, really easy. Now it's a little bit more, uh, it's not quite as easy. We just have this one big, uh, big version, this one big uh, window. But what on a desk allows us to do, I can go up here to, I'm going to right click on this other drawing that I have open over here, and I'm going to say move to a new session. So I'm going to click that, it's going to close that tab out, and it's going to open up another instance of AutoCAD for Mac 2017. And I'll give it just a moment, and there is my new session of AutoCAD for Mac. Um, now, personally, uh, I want a little bit more kind of drawing space over here so I can work. So on this particular one, I'm going to go up here to Window, and I'm going to click on this guy right here. It's called Hide Palettes. So we used to have Show Palettes as icons on the Mac side, and it would kind of condense everything into a couple icons. Don't quite have that anymore, but we can still hide the palettes. And I love this because it's different than the clean screen where you lose the command line and toolbars and everything. This one, I still have my command line, still have my status bar, but I can focus on the drawing. So again, great for if you're working in a, um, on a small screen or a laptop. And because these are full screen apps now, I can click on one of these, uh, uh, any of these, and go completely full screen in the Mac OS. But in Sierra, they also added this little split screen view. So what I can do is I can, if I click and hold on the uh, green maximize button there, I can lock this in to one side of the screen or the other. I let it go, and then I can open this one up in the other side. So again, I'm going to collapse this, give myself just a little bit more room there. But now I can jump over here, grab some geometry, jump over here, and insert it. This one's kind of big, so it's going to be way out there, but there it is. So really easy to copy and paste and navigate back and forth, jump back and forth between two versions, uh, two instances of AutoCAD. So I want to get out of it, put my cursor up at the top, and I'm going to go ahead and close this version. So I can close that window. I'll swipe over, and there's my other full, uh, full screen version there. I'm going to bring that one back down so I can control it a little bit better. So we still have that ability to drawing side by side. But that's pretty much it for the new interface. So again, pretty different, but still familiar, especially if you're coming from the Windows side. Um, and we've got a couple little tricks up our sleeve uh, that you can't do quite yet on the Windows side. The other big, big thing that we got in this version is the PDF import. This was a big deal on the Windows side. It's just a bit as big a deal over here on the Mac side as well. Um, so this is a PDF that I have that's just uh, under, it's an underlay. It was PDF attached, so it's not actually in the file, it's referenced. But again, if it's a vector PDF, we've known this for a while, I can go in here and I can grab all my object snaps and I can trace this out if I really want to uh, and have my geometry kind of locked in, which is great, but again, a lot of time trying to trace this stuff. So now, if I go up to File, Import, and I'm going to go grab this other stair drawing that I have down here. So this is from my stair manufacturer, uh, PDF, I'm going to click on Open and we have the import PDF dialog box. So this is a multi-page PDF, which means I can just click on whichever page I want to import. Since I already have the basement stairs, I'm going to do the first floor stairs here. And then I have all of these different options to control. I can control where I want to insert it. I'm going to do that on screen. Then I can control what it is I want to import. Remember, this only works for vector PDFs. So if it has any raster images or raster uh, effects and lines and so forth, it's not going to be able to import those as AutoCAD geometry. But I can still have it grab those images for me just in case. It'll also grab true type text. So anything that uses a true type font, it'll pick that up and convert it into real editable text that I can use. Uh, same thing with solid fills. It'll uh, pull those in and uh, so I can use those depending on the program that created the PDF. 
if that program was able to create PDF layers, I can use those if I like. Um, I can also just say create object layers, so it'll create one layer for geometry, one for text, uh, one for raster images, and so forth. Or I can just put it all in the current layer. It'll save the color overrides, this one has some color to it, uh, but it'll all be on layer zero. And I have a couple of extra little options down here. I can import it as a block if I want. Uh, it's smart enough to try and figure out line and arc segments and create polylines out of those if they're connected and they share vertices. It'll concert, uh, convert solid fills to hatches instead of just leaving them as these solid objects. I can also apply line weights. This one does have line weights, but I don't really want those in my drawing for the moment. I just want blank lines or thin lines. And then this last one I, I find rather interesting. I can infer line types from collinear dashes. So if I've got a hidden line that's in my PDF, instead of it picking up each individual segment or each individual dash as a separate line, if they're all collinear, it'll figure out that, oh, that's actually a single line with a hidden line type, and it'll convert that for me. So I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. Now this isn't a, uh, by any means a large PDF, but I'm going to click, and there, done really, really quickly. Let's take a quick look at what we've got. If I zoom in here, so again, these are all true type fonts, so it picked up all of this, and I can go in and edit these, just like I would any other piece of text. Um, now, this font up here, they didn't use a true type font up here, so this came in as just lines, polylines, and splines. So, a little bit broken apart there because they were trying to use a fancy text. But all of this other stuff, and notice sometimes when you go from like text to text or things like that, it starts breaking it apart if you've got, um, you know, fractions and uh, semicolons and colons and stuff. This picked up that it's all on one single line. So I can go in and just start editing it. it Notice that it's a fraction. I can stack it, do whatever I want with it. Now, up here at the top, they use kind of a, um, I've got a hatch uh, object here, so a solid hatch. I'm going to delete that first. And hiding behind that right here is that raster image. So when they created the PDF, they used a raster image for their logo. Um, but I can you know, erase that or do whatever I like with it. So again, all my uh, objects here, it picked up all the text here, uh, all my lines here, and so forth. So really, really easy, straightforward way of bringing in that geometry into AutoCAD. Now, and my example over here, this PDF is already uh, it's attached. It's not uh, imported, but it's referenced. So. I can actually import the geometry from this one as well without having to go through the trouble of trying to find it again. Um, this is also really, really handy if you've got just part of a PDF that you want to import. Again, this one's kind of small, so it's not a big deal, but if I have a big 24 by 36, you know, D or C size piece of paper with 50 different, um, you know, details and lines and everything like that, and I really don't want to let my computer have to crunch through all of that vector information. I just want one single little detail. So what I would do is attach the PDF, just like I'm, I'm used to, select it, and then I have the icon right up here for PDF import. I can also type in the command down on the command line, PDF import. Now this one doesn't have a dialog box. It's all uh, kind of run down here at the command line. But I've got PDF import, specify the corner point, polygonal, all, or settings. So if I type in S, those are all the same settings that we just went through for the more standard import. Um, all my stuff is here, all the same exact settings. So now I'm going to choose a window, and I'm just going to import part of this. Let's say just this part up here. Then it asks me what I want to do with that original underlay. I can keep it, detach it, or unload it. I'm going to go ahead and detach it, get rid of it, and there's just the geometry that was in my window. And if you notice, the window that I drew is kind of like to here. Well, it picked up that all this geometry actually expands outside the window. Um, and it still went ahead and imported it for me. So really, really handy way of getting just part of your PDF without having to worry about all that extra information. So big deal, we finally got PDF import. A couple other uh, little improvements that they did make over here for us. So we got associative center lines uh, and center marks. So it's here under the dimension tool. You don't really have to do anything to activate this. There are some system variables I'll show you in a second. But all I have to do is click on my circles, just like we're used to with our, uh, uh, as we've done before. And I'm in paper space and selecting these in model space, just like you would expect. And I can go inside of here, and if I change the size of this circle, it will change the size of the center mark, so it's associative. If I were to move one of these circles, again, it follows along and stays with it. And this 
this is another cool feature, and this was one I was kind of impressed by, is the center line tool as well. So now I can pick two lines that represent a, uh, a hole, or in this case, yeah, in this case a, a hole or a cylinder, and just pick those two lines, and it'll pick up the, uh, put that center mark, center line right in between those two lines. And again, it's associative. So if I stretch this and make this a little bit bigger, it keeps that center line perfectly centered in between those two. It doesn't matter how much I do, it's going to keep it right there. Uh, now, this has, a, again, a whole bunch of different system variables that we can uh, control up here. So we've got uh, center exe for contro uh, controls the overshoot, center mark exe controls whether you just have a little tick in the middle or you have the whole uh, the extensions, center layer. So this one's kind of cool if I enter in this one. So right now it's using current, but maybe I want to use my center layer that I already have set up. So if I go out here, we'll get rid of this one, and we'll redo it with our new uh, layer enacted. And even though I'm in the dimension layer, it'll pop it into the right layer for me. Uh, other ones, we have a uh, center line type. If you want a specific line type override or line type scale for those center marks, you can control the cross size gap and the size of the, uh, the cross size, all with these. Um, system variables. So little things like that, but little things can make a big difference in your uh, kind of daily drafting workflow. So quite happy to have those as well. Um, we, another cool little uh, new function here is we have a brand new, it's called the License Manager. So up here, go to, uh, up under the menu icon, go to About AutoCAD, and then you get this little About AutoCAD. It tells you all about it when it was released and all the uh, um, cool tools that they have. And then right here I have Manage License. So what this allows me to do is really quickly switch my license type or my, uh, my serial number. So maybe I've got my laptop and I'm on the network license at, in the office. I'm going to grab it and take it with me um, and you know go out in the field with it. I can switch this really easily from like a network license to a standalone license so I can access it out in the field. Um, and if you do happen to forget that, there's a new little kind of interface or workflow that'll let you um, open up Auto or leave AutoCAD open if you forgot to switch it to a standalone license and you leave the network. Um, it's a new little workflow that'll let you um, actually go in and still save your drawings or choose to not save your drawings uh, before you close AutoCAD. So handy little feature there. We also got a new text edit mode. So in the past, when you want to edit your text, you double click on it, make your changes, press return, and typically it would actually kick you out. With the new version, I'm actually left in the command, so I can make my changes, press enter, and I'm still in the text edit command. I don't have to double click. So it's a single click instead of a double click now. Uh, I can control that just by going into text edit. There's a system variable here, or I can go into the text edit uh, command, and down here at the very bottom, there's my mode. So I can type in M for mode, and then I can choose single or multiple. So we go back to the old way. Once I'm done making my um, alterations, press return, see I'm out of the command. So, and again, little things, but when you're you know spending eight and 10 hours a day in AutoCAD, these little things really add up. So, a couple other uh, little good little things that we got. These are a little bit harder to demonstrate. We did get a lot of 2D graphic improvements. So again, everybody's moving to these you know 4K and 5K screens. Um, and AutoCAD for Mac, we've been using you know Retina class graphics for quite a while. And they made some changes to the drawing area as well. So if you look on the uh, that copy on the right side, typically if you were copying something, you get those very kind of stepped or um, uh, you know, blocky kind of lines. In the new version, smooth those out a little bit, a little bit cleaner, a little bit nicer interface to work with. Most of the time, really doesn't matter, but once you've worked on a, you know, a retina or a 4K display for a while, going back, everything just looks kind of blocky and a uh, little rough. Also changed the way that we see dots. So um, in the past, if you had a line type that was made up of dots, it didn't matter what the line weight you made it, they were really, really hard to see. So the new version, you can see on the right, much easier to see those dots. And in the past, those dots would actually kind of show up as little squares, which is rather annoying. They look more like dashes than they did dots. New version of AutoCAD for Mac, they actually do show up just like dots, uh, so they look a little bit cleaner, a little bit easier to use. 
I also got a couple other little things, the pick first delete key alert. So if you've ever been running a, a macro or a script or anything, or a list routine, and some of those list routines need to turn off the pick first system variable in order to run themselves properly. Sometimes, depending on the quality of the programmer who wrote the routine, they might forget to turn that back on. Or maybe if the program error, or the routine errors out, it doesn't get a chance to turn that variable back on. Where this is really going to affect you is, um, and I do this quite often, I'll select my geometry on the screen, and then I'll hit the delete key on my keyboard to erase it. Well, if you don't have pick first uh, turned on, it won't let you do that. In the past, it just kind of didn't work. Didn't tell you anything, it just wouldn't work. Now, we get a little pop-up screen that just says, hey, pick first variables off, or see you're trying to delete something, do you want to turn it on? And you can control whether that happens every time. You can you know, dismiss that or hide that however you like. HP layer, so uh, in the past you could always uh, specify a layer for hatch objects no matter what layer you're on, just like we saw with the um, center marks and the center lines. Now you can specify a non-existing layer. So even if that layer doesn't exist in the drawing, it'll create that layer before it uh, creates the hatch object. So pretty cool there. Rendering online only. So we didn't gain, uh, we gained a lot of stuff, but we lost a little bit of something as well. So the um, rendering is no longer available for the desktop for uh, AutoCAD for Mac 2017. Um, and this has its pluses and minuses. Obviously, it's kind of inconvenient if you do a lot of little renders or, you know, quick renders and so forth. But if you do a lot of, um, uh, you know, really high-res rendering, uh, kind of, uh, pushes you just a little bit towards the online rendering so you can still use the 360 rendering online and instead of kind of working on you know letting your computer focus on just that rendering for what might take it four or five hours Autodesk has you know warehouses full of computers that do nothing but work on your rendering so what would take your computer four or five hours might only take theirs five ten minutes and even if it took their computers you know four or five hours that's four or five hours of it working on their computers not tying up your computer. Um, and they'll email you the, you know, the uh, final file or a link to download the final file, and so you have your, uh, your nice rendering there. So a little bit of a caveat, but it's something to consider as you're making the upgrade or making the switch. And those are most of the big uh, tools and so forth that I wanted to, um, to cover in the new version of AutoCAD for Mac. So again, we've got a new interface, much cleaner, much easier to jump to. Uh, especially if you're not used to the uh, the Mac interface, we got drawing layout tabs back. We got easy, really easy to customize uh, tool sets. We got a new full screen mode. We can set up multiple sessions side by side. Take advantage of the split screen mode in Sierra, which is great. We finally got PDF import. Oh, and that reminds me. Um, actually, I want to jump back in since I'm a couple minutes early anyway. It's one thing I overlooked. Let's jump over to this one. So I mentioned working with PDFs. We not only got PDF import, we got a couple new PDF tools as well for creating PDFs. So up here under Batch Publish, and these are only available under the Batch Publish uh, setting here. I'm going to do add my current drawing. Now, if I have printer from the page set up, I'm not going to see these options. But as soon as I go to PDF, I get these Publish Output options down here, and we get all the presets that you guys have had on the Windows side for the past. These all came out about three or four years ago, I think. We have general documentation, high quality, smallest file, and all of these settings, all they're really doing is controlling these, these variables over here. So in this case, for the smallest file, it's not going to include any layer information in the PDF. Uh, it's not going to embed any fonts. The vector quality is 400 and the image quality is 200. Uh, but if I go all the way up to the high quality print, it's going to include all the layer information, get all those fonts and embed them into the drawing. Um, it bumps up the vector quality to 2400 and the raster image quality all the way up to 600 dpi. Well, what if that's still not quite enough? Well, I have this little uh, options guy right here. If I click on that, uh, I can control these each one of these individually. So if one of these presets doesn't quite work for you, I can create my own little preset using these. And I also have access to 4800 dpi for my vector quality and my raster image quality. So if I really want to make a super, super high-res PDF, I can jack those all the way up to 4800, and that's not available on any of the other presets. And then maybe I don't want it to, you know, uh, convert, I want it to convert all the text to geometry because I don't want anybody pulling out the text, whichever. 
So I can create my own little overwrite here, click on publish, and it'll make the PDF, and I put it wherever it is I want to put it. So really, really easy way now. And um, again, plot stamps, I can open it up when, I, when it's done if I like to. Um, I can kind of set a default location if I like, and I can also either do a single PDF, or I can have it do individual PDFs for each sheet. So a couple little uh, options there that we can still go in and tweak a little bit. So not only importing PDFs, but creating PDFs a little bit easier. Uh, the PDFs have definitely gotten a lot better over the past few versions. Um, the initial versions, PDF creating, they were really, really big files compared to what was on the Windows side. And I'm very happy to say that on the Mac side now, they've drastically reduce the size that it takes to create a PDF. And the text is selectable now, um, just like it was on the Windows side. So they made a lot of improvements in that arena as well, not just in this version, but in the past uh, two or three. So again, those are uh, all the big features that I really wanted to go over today. So interface, PDF, and all that other fun stuff. So if you want to learn more, um, uh, these uh, links will be in the slide decks. You can go click on these and grab these, but we've got the AutoCAD for Mac free trial. Um, there's uh, the cross-licensing that um, uh, Volker mentioned before about being able to do Windows and Mac. Um, I've got a link there directly to the AutoCAD for Mac uh, forums section, so it's a specific session just for AutoCAD for Mac. Um, uh, more than a few expert elites uh, roam there quite a bit. Maxim K is always there. He's an incredible resource for AutoCAD for Mac. Um, so if you have you know, specific questions that you can't find in the help menu, definitely go to the forums and ask them there. Um, another resource, um, I mentioned lynda.com earlier. They are an Autodesk partner, and I am an uh, lynda.com author, but I was a member long before I was an author. It's a great website. Learn about, they have hundreds of AutoCAD videos and Revit, Inventor, public speaking, and pho photography, and all kinds of other topics. But specifically for AutoCAD for Mac, there's about six or seven courses up there just for AutoCAD for Mac, new features. And I've also got a course up there tailored to switching from the Windows side to the Mac side. So kind of showing you, uh, you know, A to B and how everything uh, relates from one side to the other. And it does use the new 2016 and 2017 interface. And if you're interested in lynda.com, we've got a link in there for a 10-day uh, free trial as well, so you can go peruse some of those videos. So I think that's about it for me. So my contact information is there. If you have any other specific questions for me, you can follow me on Twitter, uh, go to my website, shoot me an email, uh, anything I can do to help. I'm always more than happy to help out answering some questions. But I think that's about it for me. Yeah, that was, uh, that was great, Jim. Uh, great presentation. Really appreciate that. Uh, good overview. Do you have um, one um, uh, item maybe you could go over again, which is the um, uh, change in license type. Jump over here. That was, I think, our major question. Got it. So, um, uh, again, up here under uh, AutoCAD, so it's about AutoCAD, brings up the uh, little window here, and then you can click on Manage License right here. So what this allows you to do, um, again, you can change the license type. Uh, so if you have any additional plugins or anything like that, but you can kind of expand this, um, you know, update your serial number, change it, or again, change the license type. So if I have a different license type that I want to use, um, if I do change the type in the middle of this, I'm not going to lose any work. I can save it before it closes. And then the next time it starts up, it'll ask me what kind of license type, so I can kind of redo that license. Um, and this is great because if you're using, you know, maybe doing your homework on the educational version and then uh, you have your uh, work laptop and you want to be able to work on that or, um, again, if you're, uh, in the, uh, what I run into a lot of times is uh, have a client with a laptop, they're on the network license, and then they either are, take it out in the field or they're going to take it out in the field and they switch it before they leave or, again, if they get out in the field and they uh, forgot to switch it and they open it up, um, it'll actually give you the opportunity to save all your drawings or just close the program. And it is a time thing, so you only get like uh, you know, a couple minutes to do this. So it's not like you can really go in and get a lot of work done, but it gives you time to save the drawings that you want to save or the changes that you want to save or even do a save as if you don't want to you know, overwrite an existing file or just close the files without making any changes. Um, and then the next time you start up AutoCAD for Mac, it'll ask you for the, the standalone license or, again, when you get back to the office, it'll pull up the, uh, the network license. So it makes it a, a lot easier to kind of manage that aspect of it. And obviously, Mac, um, I have no idea what the ratio is, but 
everybody's got MacBooks and MacBook Pros now, so tend to be a little bit more popular on the uh, laptops than they are on the desktops, especially for AutoCAD for Mac. So um, I think they were really smart in kind of introducing that and helping those out with the uh, mobility aspect of this. Yeah, that was a great uh, feature they added in the Windows side too as well. I mean, we really, really uh, appreciate that. Yeah, it offers a lot of flexibility. Really nice. So, so again, again, thank you again, again and again and over again, Jim. <laughs> so, um, I do want to take a quick poll, and then um, we may have or may not have some more questions after that. Um, and then um, I do want to point out a couple of um, items from the support side regarding um, AutoCAD for um, the Mac. So let me get my uh, last poll out. I promise you this will be the last one. And basically, Jim, as well as myself and everybody on our team would like to know if you learned anything new. Now, we don't want to waste your time in these webinars. We want to make it worth your while. And um, knowing that we've um, been able to provide you with some new knowledge, well, that shows us it was worth your time as well as mine. For those who didn't learn anything new, I'm, I hope you'll return next time <laughs> where maybe we will show you something new. So here's our uh, results for that, okay? So it's like 96% of you, uh, that can fluctuate percent here, percent there, but uh, at the time when I closed the poll. So, so thanks for that feedback, everybody. Um, just briefly on the um, uh, topic here whoops, of AutoCAD for Mac, um, I, I do want to point out if you're running, uh, if you're wanting to install AutoCAD LT or AutoCAD 2017 uh, for the Mac, that uh, we, after the release, we discovered that there was an issue on the Yosemite operating system. So the um, application will become unresponsive or even, even crash on that. So um, it's best to move past Yosemite um, in order to run AutoCAD 2017-based uh, versions of the software. Um, so that was, that was one item. And all of a sudden, it has escaped me what the other item was, and I'm sure I'll think of it. Um, I think that's, a, yes, if I think about it, I'll shout it out, but um, be aware of that. Hey, Jim, very quick question. Um, is that, uh, can you run Autolisp um, uh, routines in uh, Mac or not? You can run uh, vanilla auto lisp routines. So anything, um, you can't do visual lisp, anything that has any VBA calls or anything to that, any visual basic stuff. But if it's just vanilla auto lisp, um, it works just fine as long as it's using the you know, commands that AutoCAD for Mac has. Um, but yeah, I run them all the time. Yeah, and that was a good question. That's been around for uh, a couple of releases now. What, 2013, Jim? Uh, even the first releases, I think, could still do basic Lisp. Oh, maybe, yeah, okay. Well, <laughs> old age. <laughs> I'm going to use that as an excuse today, getting old. Sometimes um, to the pinpoint, they all blend together after so many right. <laughs> That's the other thing. There was a time we could probably all ramble off every single system variable <laughs> in AutoCAD. And nowadays, uh, yeah. A lot more to it. So um, I have nothing further to add at this moment. Um, Jim, do you? No, I think that was everything that I wanted to, to cover and go over. I think those were all the big okay. features. So. Hey, Wilco, okay, can well, you look at the licensing question very quickly? Uh, you, you talk about cross-platform licensing. Uh, there is talk about suites. And uh, if you can take a look and see if they are eligible or not, or what do you need to do to be eligible for cross-platform? 
Well, really, if you're running AutoCAD um, or AutoCAD LT, and if uh, there is a um, version of the Mac um, software available, you are eligible to download that and install it on your Mac. Uh, but it's like it's like anything else, you um, cannot use it concurrently uh, with the AutoCAD for Windows version. Okay, one license or the you know one application, uh, one operating system or the other. It's kind of like I can install AutoCAD for Windows on my laptop and my workstation, but it can only be used one application at a time, not concurrently. And that's how it works with the Mac software as well. That makes sense? Is that what if you were... some people have suites? Well, it has AutoCAD in it. And all they really need to do is go to their Autodesk account. This is actually the easiest way to do it, is go log into your Autodesk account. And you will see all the software that is available to you and you can download it from there. And uh, if you have any flavor of AutoCAD, which is, say, the design suite, which I have installed on my system, I have AutoCAD for the Mac as well as AutoCAD LT for the Mac uh, available to me for download and installation. Uh, so um, it'll be in the Autodesk account the download as well as the serial numbers and product keys for those downloads. So if it's available to you, it'll be listed there. Yeah, in short, if you're running this week, you can install AutoCAD for Mac. I kind of catch you off there, Naman. Was there something? Uh, actually, it was Jim. I was just saying, um, oh, Jim. If, you, if you think you're missing it, um, the spot where you can choose the operating system, where it says, usually it just says like Windows 64-bit, it's kind of buried under there. It's not just, you know, 32-bit or 64-bit. You can pick Mac in there sometimes as well. So it might be where it's, you're missing it or where it's buried, but take a look there as well. Right. And I'm actually, um, maybe I can show this on mine. Give me one second, we'll show one quick thing about the Autodesk account. And yeah, okay. And then we will call it a day after this, basically because it is a day. All right. Um, all righty. All right, I am going to switch over to my screen here, Jim. What I have opened up here is um, the Autodesk Application Manager. So that's showing me the majority of the applications that are available to me and, and which ones I can still install and so forth. Uh, if I go into accessing my account here, hopefully this will help some of you. I wasn't expecting to launch this, otherwise I would have already had it open. As you can see, under the management page here, it lists my products available to me. Uh, now, obviously, I have access to just about anything we have here, but um, in order to test things, we create our own accounts. And you'll see we have AutoCAD LT here, as well as AutoCAD LT for Mac, AutoCAD for Mac. And this is because I have the design suite as a chosen product. And if we go here, you'll see that we have um, several different versions going backwards, uh, going back, uh, current version, oops, let's get rid of that highlighting. The current version as well as the last or the previous three versions are available to me. Okay, so um, pretty much anything that's supported is available and then I can also find the serial numbers um, for those uh, versions here. So, 
I'm not sure why we have to get a different serial number here, but the bottom line is you'd probably want the current version and maybe this one back, but no further back, not with all the new features that have been added. So anyway. You may want to uh, off the serial number, by the way. Oh, uh, yeah, right. Thank you. Very good. It's recorded now. I'll we'll have to edit that. Um, but um, I think that's about it. And I appreciate you telling me that, Naman. What are you thinking? How foolish. All righty. So um, I think we'll call it a day. I appreciate everybody's attendance. All right. Jim, thank you again for the wonderful uh, presentation. Naman, thank you for your assistance as well. I hope everybody has a great day, and uh, we'll see you in February.